The military-industrial complex grew to gigantic proportions during the war and then flourished during the four decades of the Cold War. The United States began to exert efforts building a world-leading weapons industry and extended it to new industries like aerospace, energy, electronics, information technology, and bioengineering. Think tanks and the media have all been dragged into it and they became part of the complex of shared interest. Between 1948 and 1989, the government spent more than $10 trillion for national defense. And much of the money found its way into the bank accounts of the defense contractors, their employees, and their suppliers. In 1961, the U.S. went to the war in Vietnam to support a pro-U.S. government and contain communism. Back then, there was an increase in the use of contractors to maintain increasingly complex weapon systems alongside troops in the field, as well as the use of private air transport companies like Air America. Take General Electric, one of the United States' largest military contractors, the company's working aerospace production was mainly for the government and was considered essential for the nation's security. Between 1962 and 1970, the company experienced dramatic growth. Over the course of eight years, sales improved at a relatively steady pace. Sales in 1970 were $3.75 billion higher than sales in 1962. Meanwhile, during the period between 1970 and 1989, the profit rates of the top 50 defense contractors substantially exceeded those of comparable non-defense companies. 